traders, Cousin Benny coming to you on March the 10th. Remember to set your clocks forward. It's now 8 o'clock. Thinking about some things that have occurred over the last few weeks, uh, we're looking at the S&P 500 cash, which is at levels not seen in some time. If we look at these pivots down here, and the recent pivot that we put in up here. The 127 extension is up here in the 1565-1566 range. If we move this back down to these pivots that we put in in 2012, we can see the 1618 extension right up here, very close to where price is right now. So just be aware of that we look at this pivot to this pivot we can see that we exceeded the 127 extension and the 1618 is way up here at 1605 which I believe is a number that top step over the CME pit was talking about last week as a target I didn't catch what his time frame was zooming in a bit we can see that Stochastics is overbought. It has been overbought this whole period of January, February, and got back up here again in March. So we can stay overbought. MACD did cross to the upside. So you need to be aware of that. We're, we punched outside of the upper Bollinger Band on Thursday, and we continue to trade along the upper Bollinger Band. So we can move higher. That's the bullish case. I noted a tweet over the weekend, yesterday actually, that Yukarowitz posted where Bernie Schaefer was talking about in March 2000, 1550 was an intraday high, 1553, and no closes were above 1550. You can see this stick right here. Okay, if we zoom into this, disregard all this, this is just notes on my chart about Fed easing and so forth. So if we look at that high that we put in in 2000, okay, we made an intraday high of 1553 according to Bernie. Well, 1552.87 is close enough. And we close below that. On July 2007, the intraday high was 1555. Two closes above 1550 and the highest close was 1553. So that's Mar uh, July 2007. Alright, so that's July right there. And October two 2007 obviously is this high right here. At 1576 and six closes above 1550. The highest close was 1565. So overall, March 2000 to date, intraday high, 1576 with eight closes above 1550. So that's the bearish case. You have to be cognizant of the fact of where the stock market has been in the past and how significant this resistance level is up at 1550 and precisely why GTO was looking at shorts up in that area, if I'm not mistaken. So. That number's been around since 2000. Looking at a different view of the S&P 500 monthly, we can see that RSI is back at overbought. We saw that in 2007. Okay, so twice in 2000, um, excuse me, twice in 2007, and now we're getting into overbought territory again on the month. So if you follow Todd Solomon, he was pointing out that this is the fifth crossover of the RSI to 70 in 10 years, okay, two of which marked short-term corrections. So keep that in the back of your mind uh, while you're trading this week and into uh, the following few months till May when we all sell and go away. Looking at the 10-year Treasury yield, we can see 
that we broke above this level here and we continue to rise we hit the 100 period moving average and we close very close to that and obviously the last time we saw highs like this was in March of 2012 and again in October of 2011 so we have to be aware of this level up here which was resistance and was support previously we can thank uh, Arthur Hill over at Stock charts.com for pointing this out by the way. The 30 year you can see that we're putting in higher lows and we have these levels again on this as well. So be aware of this level of potential resistance in here just above with the 200 period just above that level of resistance. Note that we're breaking above levels here. So this is pretty significant. We broke above this level, now we're breaking above this level. Um, do we break above these highs that we put in in 2011-2012? That's yet to be seen with the 200 period just overhead. The IEF 7 10-year Treasury Bond Fund, you have to be aware of be aware of these areas where we based and then broken above that level. In this particular case, we're basing here and show a potential for a possibility of a breakdown out of this base. If we don't break down here, we can also bounce back up into this level if you look at stochastic. So keep that in mind. Looking at the 20 year, we can see that we're still in this descending wedge and we're right on the lower trend line presently. We broke down below the 100 period, this white line, with the 200 period below. Is it possible that we could put in? a low down here and create a parallel channel down that's very possible so you have to alert yourself to that possibility you also see a left shoulder head possibility that we bounce and put in a right shoulder for whatever reason in which case we'd have this neckline here to deal with Again, these are just potentials, things that I'm looking at. Doesn't necessarily mean this is going to work out this way. But I like to look at the possibilities, both bullish and bearish, when I'm trading, as well as watching stocks that are trading with relative strength or relative weakness, depending on which way the S&P 500 cash is moving and the trend that it might be in. Again from Arthur Hill, note the non-farm payroll data that he plotted this weekend. Also note TNX and S&P. The divergence, they're completely spread apart. The likelihood is these eventually are going to go back to a mean and get closer together. Also note the jobless claims, which peaked in 2009 when we had the bottom and continues to move lower. And if you push and if you draw a single line and average these out, you can see that we continue to descend. So, something to keep in mind while you're trading. I personally don't feel the looking at the dollar. If you haven't been aware of what's happened with the dollar in the last few weeks you were probably asleep or under a rock somewhere because we had quite a bit of strength that we haven't seen since uh, 2012 when we surged here and hit these highs at right around 84 so we have 
quite a bit of strength on the dollar. We have commodities showing a bit of weakness. Looking at the euro US dollar, since we put in this weekly pivot up here at the 137 level, the high was 137.112 in February 2013. In February, so we have to be aware of this level, the possibility of a left shoulder ahead. We bounce somewhere, possibly come down and put in a right shoulder. Note that MACD has turned down and crossed over. And note where your moving averages are. Zooming in a bit and looking at the daily, we can see the levels that we were watching last week. In here, now we're a little bit lower. Watch this level here. In this low right here which we've been testing over the last week so if we break down I'd watch this level here at 129 do note that MACD is starting to turn level off okay note last week we talked about the possibility of the Aussie Japanese yen pair getting back into this channel which it sure as hell did. I was a bit surprised but we traded it nonetheless. We have a MACD crossover and we put in a hammer or excuse me a shooting star on Friday. So looking at some FIB levels here we put in this low and this high right here that our 127 extension is right up here at 102 and change. I'm not saying we get up there, it's just something to pay attention to. Yeah, if we move this level down to this where we broke above before, consolidated, and then we broke above, we can see the 127 extension is right here. And we tested it. Forex traders use um, Fibonacci is quite a bit, so that just leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy and the fact that the more people that uses a particular indicator, the more likelihood there will be a resistance level where everyone's following the same information. So this pivot, this pivot high here and we broke above, bounced back off of this 100% level and then moved higher. Now we put in a shooting star at the 127 extension. Looking at the comp, you see the highs that we've been putting in. We're still inside of this ascending channel. So we could possibly tag that. Drawing some fibs from this pivot here up to that high. Right here, the 127 extension is just beyond this trend line. So unless we reverse anytime soon, there's a possibility we could overtest or overshoot this upper trend line and hit the 127 extension. Crossover on the MACD. The Russell bit is the same thing. Remember last week we talked about this descending channel and we moved above this level. So you can see where we are here relative to these pivots. And of course we broke above this level. We came down and retested this. this extension of this trend line. These two pivots broke above, came down, retested it, now we're moving higher. So we have this pivot here now and we're breaking above that level. If we draw some fibs in here from this pivot here up to this high, you can see the 127 extension is right up here, right near 960. Okay, so that's the Russell. There you go.